Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Federico Tartarini and today I will show you how you can create very beautiful charts in LaTeX using ChatGPT and a LaTeX compiler. You will see and you will be astonished on how simple it is to create a chart with ChatGPT. You just have to provide a prompt to ChatGPT and then ChatGPT is going to generate the following charts for you. So we are going to see how to create a bar plot using a simple prompt. Then we are going to specify a more detailed prompt to generate the bar plot that you can see here on my screen, which I think it looks much better. We are going to move on and we are going to also plot a line plot, followed by a line plot, but where we fill the area under the line. And again, you don't need to know how to plot a chart in LaTeX at all. You just have to give the right prompt to ChatGPT and then ChatGPT will generate the plot for you. And the scope of this video is actually how to write an effective prompt for ChatGPT. Because the problem is that if you write a simple prompt, then you're going to get the chart that you can see here at the top. But on the other end, if you write a more detailed prompt, you can see something like this. So let's move on and see which other charts we are going to see how to create. So we are going to also generate a scatter plot and a 3D plot. So in this video, as I did in my previous video, in which I show you how to create tables in LaTeX using ChatGPT, we are going to be using a bit of both, a bit of Visual Studio Code and a bit of Overleaf. If you don't know how to set up LaTeX, Inside Visual Studio Code, I have two videos, one for Mac and one for Windows, so you can check them out. I will put a link in the description, but also look on my channel, and I will, a card will appear here at the top. Okay? So here I'm going to move the Visual Studio Code on the right side of my screen, and on the left side I have ChatGPT. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using ChatGPT 3.5, because it already works very well. In future, you might be able to use ChatGPT 4 or another version of ChatGPT. I'm just decide, decided to use ChatGPT 3.5 just because it's free at the moment and is accessible to everyone. You just have to create an account. If you don't want to create an account, you have also another option. You need to use Edge, so Microsoft browser, but then you can also go to bing.com forward slash chat and over there you can have actually access to ChatGPT 4. But in this case, we don't need that. And since the answer of ChatGPT 3.5 is a little bit more verbose, for this tutorial, we're going to be just using the ChatGPT 3.5. So let me start it by canceling everything inside this document here. And then we're going to use the power of how to compile inside Visual Studio Code. And we are going to be just creating all the plots. So I'm going to cancel all the figures and I'm also going to remove all the packages here at the top because I want to start from scratch. So the first plot that we are going to be generating is a bar plot. So I'm going to copy and paste the prompt and press enter and then I'm going to explain the prompt. So the first thing that we have, we have to say to ChatGPT is create a bar plot in LaTeX using random data comparing the height of men and women across different age groups. So as you can see, already ChatGPT has started and is generating the plot for us. The most important thing is, first of all, to read the prompt that, not to read, sorry, the response that ChatGPT gave you. And I love ChatGPT also because it actually explains what it has done. So in this case, it's actually telling you that you need to use the PGF plot package, that you may not have been aware that you needed that package to generate plots. And it also explains some other things. So you can also learn, and even if you have never generated a chart, you can also learn in this way how to create one. So here, what we need to do is we want to keep a bit the structure. So we have this section. So we are just going to copy the use package here at the top in our document preamble. So between document class and begin document. So here we are just importing this package that we are going to be using to generate the plot. And then we copy the code from between begin figure to end figure. And we are going to copy under the section here. So Visual Studio Code is going to create the plot for us. And this is great. Already we have a figure with a caption. 
and we can see that the figure is already started looking nice. And of course, we can also change the data. So if I want to change the data here, and I want to put 185, I can change this value, and you can see that the plot is updated automatically. And that's a key point. I mean, of course, this is just random data, but this gives you the main structure to create the plot. So you can just change the X values here and the Y values here, and then you can just plot whatever you want. Another thing to notice is that I generated a plot before, but every time you write a new prompt inside ChatGPT, you may get a slightly different response. So let's write this prompt here, and then we're going to go through all the prompt uh, steps, and I'm going to explain how you can generate a much better plot. So in this case, again, we say create a bar plot using random data, comparing the height of men and women across different age groups. So the first part of the prompt is exactly the same. But this time, we are going to say that we want the legend at the top of the chart because, as you can see here, it's not very nice because the legend was on top of age group. Then we also want to remove the border around the legend because we don't like it, it doesn't look very professional. And we want to remove the border around the chart, but we still want the um, axis ticks. So we just want the number still. We want the chart to be 12 cm in width and 7 cm in height, because as you can see, it's not really taking the whole line width. We also want to remove the border around the plot, but keep the X and Y axis. So this is kind of a repetition of the previous prompt. And then we're going to reduce the X axis line width, and we're going to add a title to the plot. So let's see what is the output of ChatGPT. So we just have to remove all the begin figure. That's a key important thing. So here I've already done a mistake, but let's recompile. And now we can see that the chart is amazing. So we can get a much better result by just writing a better prompt. So we can see that we got everything that we wanted. Only one problem, we can see that the legend is on top of the title. But that's not a big deal because we can actually see that the code is very well written. So we say legend style here, hat, and then we can interpret that this is 0.5, so it will be like the X value. So we can just increase a little bit this value here and let's see how it looks. And this is perfect. So we can actually see that now we have an amazing plot. And of course, you can change the prompt. If you don't like this type of chart, you can go on and say change the colors, change the title, or of course, some of the things is actually much easier if you change them yourself and say like a new title. So now that we have created a much better plot by just understanding how to write an effective prompt, let's move on and also create a line plot. So this time, we are going to write a slightly different prompt. And let me just again write the prompt, and then I'm going to explain everything. So if you are already in the same chat, or chat in the chat with ChatGPT, so you're not creating a new chat, you basically don't have to tell him every time that you have to plot in LaTeX. But if it is the first chart that you're actually generating, please tell it so, because otherwise you might create the code in Python or in R or in any other programming language. And then now we are going to say similar thing as before. So we want 20 centimeter wide and height of 7 centimeter. We want to remove any grid line this time. We want to, and we don't know, I mean, what it would have generated, but let's give it all our requirements so we get the plot straight away from as, as we like it. Okay, so we're going to remove the border around the plot, but keep the X and Y axis. So we again reduce the line width. We want to add a title. This time we want to specify the X axis range. We want to say that it's only from minus one to five. We also want to add a caption and we want to change the color of the line to red. The thing is that is still missing is that we haven't told ChatGPT what to plot. And then in the last line we say now with the following like style, plot the equation, which is a parabola. Okay, so again, we can see that we have the same import here at the top. So we simply have to copy from begin figure to end figure. And in this case, I'm going to again replace all the code here, and I'm actually removing also the section. And this is great. As you can see, we are getting a very beautiful plot. And again, we don't need to have any prior knowledge on how to use LaTeX to generate figures. 
and we can also just change it a bit okay so let's try to say okay we decided to want to have like this x style tick and we say none okay or the axis line style none so let's press command and then forward slash and this is going to uncomment this line of code and we we'll actually see how it looks so maybe we like it a little bit more like this in our case, actually, we didn't get exactly what we wanted because we say remove the board around the plot, but keep the X and Y axis. OK, so let's try to give again the prompt. And as you can see before, I wrote the same prompt and it was working. But let's try to do it again and just actually slightly modify the prompt this time. So this time we actually said remove the board around the plot. And we actually, so we, we actually wrote a little bit less than before because actually we didn't tell ChatGPT to keep the X and Y axis. We just say reduce the X and Y axis uh, line width. And we can see already that this time is probably better the result because we have a new code here so we can test it. And uh, sometimes it's just a little bit of a trial and error. So we can see this time how the chart look like. And this is much better, I think, because we can actually see now we have the axis, which is great. And as you can see, the main difference is here. Now we have a line width of 0 0.5. We can also try to comment out these two line of code here, and we want to see what it happens. And actually, we can see that now we have the ticks here, which is great. So we can actually remove these ticks. If you don't want to try, just keep changing the prop prompt to ChatGPT, and I'm sure you will get the results that you want. It's going to be a bit of a trial and an error, and each time that it's going to generate a new response, also read the explanation here at the bottom, because it actually is telling you a lot of useful information, and you can honestly learn a lot by just reading. So we're going to use a similar prompt to the one that we used before. So let me just copy and paste it again, and then we're going to go through it together. So just I want to create a plot with LaTeX using the package PGF plots. And again, you can also specify the package that you want to use. The plot should be the same as before. Remove any grid line, remove the border, same as before. But this time we want to say that we want to plot the following equation. So we have the same equation as before, and you should fill the area under the core curve in red with an alpha, alpha is just a transparency. I could have used also a more simple word, which is transparency of 0 0.5. We can also say we want to also have another plot, which is x at the power of 2 plus x plus 1. But this time we should fill the area under the curve in yellow with an alpha of 0 0.5. And this is very important that we add these two uh, alpha, because then we can see if it has actually worked. OK, because otherwise one color will just be on top of the other and then we cannot see the background color. So let's see if it has actually worked and let's see what ChatGPT has generated for us. OK, so actually is not really working. And as you can see, I mean, sometimes it's just a little bit of a trial and error. And we can actually see that here is actually missing, OK, the fill. OK, it's not actually specifying the fill. So if you get something like this, you can try with the same prompt to regenerate the response and see what's going on. And maybe this time it's going to get it right. OK, so we can keep looking at what is generating and let's see if this time fixes the problem for us. So as you can see now, everything is working because we have the fill area, which is red. And now we have yellow. So sometimes by just regenerating the same response, we get a better result. And here we actually say better. OK, we haven't tested the code, but I also is explaining here what it has done. So let's go back into the figure here and copy everything again. And this is important to know because not always is going to get everything right uh, at the, the first time. But now we are we have a much better a much better result. Okay, so let's actually comment these two lines here and see. And you can put a percentage sign, or you can just leave it there. So we can actually click here, and then we can see that this is going to fill it in red, and this is going to fill it in yellow. 
and it's a much is much better. One other problem actually that we are getting, so now we can see that it's filling it in yellow, but it actually hasn't add a, a, um, an alpha, okay? So again, let's try one last time, and uh, instead of seeing alpha, which is usually the right way of seeing, because that's how they call that variable, but uh, with a transparency of 0 0.5. So let's replace alpha with transparency, and uh, let's see that if this time we are a little bit more lucky and we should be able to see it straight away because uh, we're going to get the result. Of course, sometimes ChatGPT will not solve the problem if you try to generate the answer many times. In that case, as you can see here, we are not getting it, uh, it's not getting it right, uh, I think, because as you can see, it's not giving us uh, basically the feel and the alpha. In that case, unfortunately, you will just have to either try Bing uh, dot com and then chat or just do a simple google search because honestly here what is missing is just a very simple command which is just fill opacity okay so with just a simple google search you will have been able to find the answer and let me actually add it here just to show you how it will be okay so as you can see we have a fill opacity and now is looking much better. Let's move on. And now we want to just create a scatter plot. And again, here this time, we're just going to write a prompt to chat GPT. So here we're going to keep it simple, the prompt, because this time we have some data and we just want to upload them and change it, but we want to have like the main structure of the chart. So what we wrote to chat GPT is I want to create a plot in LaTeX. So again, we give the width and the height. We want to add a title and a caption. But then the x axis and the y axis should be 0.5 point, similar to before. Now we just want to create a random scatter plot using 50 points. Again, you can see here that ChatGPT was actually quite smart because it is limited in the number of characters that it can answer basically our prompt. So it actually didn't give us all the points. But the nice thing is that it's actually telling us to add more point here. So if I want, I can actually simply add another point, which will be one, and then a space one, and then we can add two. And now we should have a point one and one, two and two, and then let's end up with adding another point, which is three and three. So basically you just have to add a few points more, and then you have your beautiful scatter plot. I promised you before that I would have used Overleaf. So here we are in Overleaf. So we just create a new project, blank project, and we're going to call it example. The name doesn't really matter. So we just create this project and we're going to have a blank project. So we can just collapse this tab here and this is our file. So we can just zoom in a bit here on the right side and let's write the last prompt to chat GPT. Okay. So here I'm going to, as usual, copy and paste the prompt, and then I'm going to explain everything to you. So I find it amazing that you can actually tell ChatGPT not only to plot a 3D plot, but also you can specify the color map that you want to use. So here we are actually saying that we want a plot using this package here. We are actually saying that we want the Viridis color map. We are specifying the X and Y range. We are going to specify the first 40 samples. So it's the first time that you generate a 3D plot. You might not know that 40 samples is related to the resolution of the plot. If you ignore this prompt, then eventually you will realize that and you can just change it later on if you see that the plot is not, the resolution of the plot is not great. And finally, we are going to say that we do not want to draw the axis. And we want to plot this function here. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the results. As usual, it is very nice that we have the figure generated. Now, the error that we shouldn't make is that we don't have to just copy the begin figure, but since we started a new project, we also have to remember to import the package here at the top. So we just go here at the top and then we press Ctrl or Command Enter, and this is going to regenerate the uh, recompile, the PDF file here on the right side of the screen. So for 3D plots, it might take a little bit longer to compile the plot. But there is actually nothing really wrong with it, but we are actually seeing it from the top view. And it would have been nicer just to see from a side. We actually didn't specify that, so we cannot really blame ChatGPT for that. But we can see actually that we have the view here. So 
Let's change that and let's try to change and see how it looks. So instead of 90, we're going to pass 45 and we're going to generate the plot again. And as you can see now, we are translating and we're seeing the chart from the side. And of course, you can also modify this variable here and we can see that we are going to be seeing the, um, the, the chart now from a different angle again. So I think it's honestly fantastic. You just have to write a simple prompt and you get all the results. And again, here now, if you want to, you can keep changing the, th the things. So if you want, you can, for instance, remove the title. Um, this is honestly fantastic that we can just get the color map without any prior knowledge on how to create a plot. And then here we can also um, specify or uh, remove other things. And here is also actually told us also how to generate uh, like a title for a color bar. But we can see that actually the, the, the label here is actually not coming up very well. So for this time here, we are going to be just removing the label here from the side. And then of course, you could ask ChatGPT to put it on the right side because like this, we just want to have a clean and nice simple plot. I really hope you have learned a lot in this video and you have learned how to write effective prompts to generate plots in ChatGPT. Thank you very much for listening all the way till the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Honestly, it really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So then this video is going to be more visible to other people that are actually interested in the same topic. Also, it will be beneficial if you subscribe to my channel because I have a lot of other videos on LaTeX that you may be interested in watching. If you want to support this channel, you can also do so by buying me a coffee. More information down in the video description below or you can support me on Patreon. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate that and see you in the next video.